This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author and host of The Ken Coleman Show, is my co-host today as we take your questions about your life, your money, and with Ken here, your career. All about jobs and all about careers and all about what you're going to do on the income side of this money equation, as well as we'll talk to you about your life and your money. Open phones at 888-825-5225. John is in New York City to start off this hour. Hey, John, how are you? Hi, Dave. I'm doing well. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Awesome. Uh, I had a quick question as far as uh, I currently live in a co-op. And within the next three or five years, I plan on moving out into a house. So I'm looking at holding on to the co-op as a rental property. However, I just don't know if the maintenance that I'm also paying for the co-op kind of excludes this as being a useful rental property. Um, I know there's different values that you could work the numbers on, but just for the simple fact of a maintenance alone, which is actually more than the mortgage that I pay. I have a 30-year mortgage, I'm sorry to say. Um, So I want to know your opinion on that. Is it best that I just sell the co-op when I'm ready to buy a house, or should I actually dig deeper into the numbers to find out? Well, what we want you to move towards, because it's the shortest distance to wealth, is to being 100% debt-free, house and everything. And it sounds like that keeping this co-op means that you're going to have debt on the co-op and probably on the new house as well, right? Correct. Yeah, so I'm going to move you away from that. I would not buy rental property or invest in rental property directly or indirectly until I can do it with cash after my home is paid for. And that's what we teach. Now, that's very slow. It takes a lot of time. But then you don't get burnt on the properties. It also sounds like that this particular property, even if it were paid for and your home to buy would be paid for, still might be a questionable rental because this maintenance factor might offset any fun that you'd be having cash flow wise. Right. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much yeah. That's what I imagined. The ideal situation would be within the three to five years, me and my current girlfriend would be married, and we would fund the house. I mean, it would be in New York. It's tough to pay cash for what we would be looking for. So I just figured I'm living in the co-op. I'm by that time, I didn't know if I should refinance the 15 year, even yeah. as a rental, but it no, sounds I, like I, overall, no, the I, move I, I would sell it and I would take the equity to move towards the house and then have a game plan for getting the house paid off as soon as possible. And then start talking about saving up and investing in rental real estate. But um, most of the time, you don't move out of your property into your home and turn the old property into a uh, into a rental because most of the time that means you're going to involve extra debt to pull that off. Yeah, and it sounds from sounds like from a cash flow standpoint, he could be breaking even or losing money given all the maintenance stuff that he began to identify there. In, so, in addition to that, in addition problem, to yeah. everything you gave him. Yeah, and I and I I mean New York real estate values obviously are. Uh, it's a unique mm-hmm. market that we're talking about in, in Manhattan in particular. And so, you know, probably could make up a ton of what he didn't make on cash flow with increase in value. Yes. Assuming that they don't continue destroying that town politically um, with COVID and cops and everything else. It's a mess. I mean, it's the worst it's been in decades. And uh, I'm a huge fan of New York City. But it's a mess right now. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so, you know, it, it's it, politics matter when it comes to economics around real estate. And sure does. Economics around your businesses and that kind of stuff. So that that's what's in play there. So I'm, a lot of reasons to not keep this co-op. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the call. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Kathleen is with us in Milwaukee. Hi, Kathleen. How are you? 
Oh, I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, I, you know, I've been listening long enough to know that Roth is the rate is the way to go. Uh Uh, My husband has had a just a traditional 403b for several years, and uh-huh. now uh, work does offer the Roth. And I, I think my understanding is is that if he just stopped paying into the Roth or paying into the traditional, he could open a Roth, uh-huh. and work's match would go into the traditional, uh-huh. and then his um, the stuff that he puts in would go into the Roth. Correct. I just wanted to see, we, we don't have the extra funds right now to pay the taxes, but I just wanted to see if, if we should just do that, just stop the traditional, start yes. the Roth, or if we should, or if it's better to like, if interest is better, just keeping it compounding with. No, it does. It does not affect, going. it does not affect your end result. It does not affect compounding at all. Uh, oh, two, okay. two piles compound that are e- equal in size to both the piles added together compound at exactly the same rate. $100,000 okay. in two accounts compounds at, as 200000 at exactly the same rate as 200000 in one account. Okay. Does not change the math. Okay. So you just uh, don't change that at all. But you're right. You don't want to activate and pay taxes on all of the money that's sitting there. So we'll leave what he's done to this point in traditional. And you're required to receive the match in traditional going forward. But from this point forward, his contribution should be in a Roth. And yeah, you're doing that exactly, exactly right. So, Ken, it's kind of a rock, paper, scissors thing. Yeah. Match beats Roth beats traditional. And that's what she's already figured out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, and, it, it, and it always works that way. Uh, you know, it's like when people figure out and the, the real benefits of what? When we get into the Roth, it's because of the tax implications. Tax free. Free. That's when you right. look up and you got a million dollars in your it's account. It's a huge difference. <laughs> and it's all tax free versus it's all taxable. That's there a go. $250,000, $350,000 per million issue. Ugh. That's a lot of money. So that word Roth is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars exactly a right. letter. So yeah, you don't R O T H. That's four hundred grand right there. You know, that's I mean, right. at least yeah. It's it's when you do it over over a period of your working lifetime, it's a, it's a lot, lot of money. Money. Not to mention, I just hate taxes, Dave. So it has the added benefit, not just the zeros, but I just feel better. I don't have to pay taxes. I'm just less pissed off. (laughs) Essentially is what it boils down to. That's the emotional and financial benefit. That's it. There's a spiritual benefit. (laughs) I don't stay angry all the time. Yeah, that's good. I love it. That's fun. All right, open phones here. Ken Coleman, my co-host today, host of the Ken Coleman Show, now heard on over 75 radio stations, Sirius XM, as a podcast, and on YouTube. Everywhere great radio stations or great radio shows are heard, you can pick him up. And he's always talking about your life and your career and finding your dream gig. New book is out called Paycheck to Purpose. It's on pre-sale right now. We will ship them to you in the fall when we actually put them on the street. And you can get a bargain on it right now with a bunch of add-ons. From Paycheck to Purpose, the clear path to doing work you love at RamseySolutions.com. Stop paying your overpriced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The average family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless.
Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225 here on The Ramsey Show. Jennifer is with with us in Edmond, Oklahoma. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. How can we help? Hey, big fan. Um, so I am feeling lost with my job. I just started a, a new job about three months ago. The last couple have not worked out. And I'm trying to decide if I should go back to school for counseling or an MBA or just look for another job. Okay. So we've got two options there that are very different, counseling or an MBA. And <laughs> yeah, so I, I hear you laughing here, which is okay. But, I mean, where do those choices come from? Are those just out of nowhere or something you've been thinking about for a while? Thinking about for a long time. Which one is the longest in your head and heart? That's the thing. I can't decide. I feel like counseling is more what I'm really good at. Okay. Well, and now, if I could talk to people all day, that's what I do. Okay. No, there. Okay. No, there are the clues. So let's start with talent. Okay. So we talk about talent, passion, and mission. These are the three indicators that every human being has. When we talk about stage one of my seven stages to do what you're born to do, it's get clear. So let's look at the indicators. Talent. So what talents do you think a counselor needs to have that are non-negotiable? What would you say? Give me two or three. Like. Empathy, yep. listening, yep. being really good with people. Great. Okay, uh, so I would call that communication, connection, and compassion, right? All right, so, uh-huh. so you've got those in spades. If I interviewed everybody that knows you, would they say Jennifer's really gifted in those areas, yes or no? Yes. All right. So doesn't it also stand to reason, Jennifer, that the things that we're good at, those talents, we actually enjoy using those talents? And you, you said so beautifully, if I could listen to people all day long, that would be great. But it's not just the listening part. What fires you up when you're listening to people? What happens next after you listen to them? Kind of coaching them along, giving them advice. Just Fantastic. connecting with people. Fantastic. This is easy, Dave. We don't really need to talk much more with Jennifer because it's very obvious the type of work that you would love to do. I want to know the why, though. Is there something from your story, whether you experienced it or you observed uh, this, that it's been a long time of thinking about counseling others and being a guide to them? What's in your story that gives you the why behind this? Well, I just know that I really want to help others. And I know um, I had a family member uh, die from mental struggles a few years ago. And, uh, you know, just I've struggled with mental health and I know so many people. Yeah. And I just know I can help them. I know you can. And that's what I want you to hold on to right now, because in the days ahead, as you begin to strike a path forward, you're going to have times of fear and doubt. And you've got to you've got to kind of strike those just just cross them out, right? A line right through them, whatever the voice is, and go back to the why that you just shared with well, us. So well, not the MBA. The answer is no no to the MBA, but yes to what do I have to do to get qualified to be a counselor to serve those people? Okay. So you got why, to- uh, why, why so many jobs in the last while? Why are you bouncing, oh, why are you bouncing not- around? I am currently doing um, engineering. And I'm just the remoteness has been really hard. Not talking to anybody has been really tough. Oh, so they got your own work from home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not to mention, it's not work that you love. You don't love the work. You just kind of no. fell into it and you're just trying to search for something instead of. You have an engineering yeah. degree? Yep. Yeah. Okay. How old are you? 38. Okay. But why did you bounce around? What were the other it's been, the same, the other it's been at the same company. Um, the last one, it just, it didn't fit. So they put me in another one and I agreed to it. And it just, it has, I thought it'd be more people interaction. It has not been, and it just has not been a good fit. Yeah. So now we got to switch gears and you got to go get educated to be a counselor. So you got to do your homework on that. What's that going to cost? Yeah, How I, long is that going to take? I have them. That's not a bit, that's not an issue for, for yeah. us. Um, right. It's just not knowing what to do now. Well, what to do now is is, is you got to plan this thing. So, you know, are you okay. going to go full-time? you got to go part-time. How's it going to affect uh, the next decision, which is am I working my way through or am I going full-time? I mean, those are the things. you got to pick a school. Do not get sucked into the brand name decision. Nobody cares where you get your counseling degree. Nobody. Okay. Do you understand no. what I'm saying? So don't get sucked into, well, the number I'm of times go someone sits school. down with a marriage counselor and say, or a mental health counselor and says, uh, before we start, I'd like to know where you graduated from, is zero. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's zero. 
So the only thing that matters is the quality of the information, the quality of the knowledge. That okay. You yeah. So, I mean, when I sit down with my doc, I don't know where my yeah. doctor went to get med school. Right. I didn't even ask him. It's like, was it bragging rights that he went to? My doctor went to, who gives a crap? Are you well? That's Are right. you okay? It's true. Did he fix your broken whatever? Yeah, that's what matters here. Can you get the help? And uh, don't fall into that. And, and you know, take a take the track uh, as a 38-year-old that is not the traditional college track as well. Something that uh, shortcuts you straight into that. Yeah. You got an engineering degree. Maybe there's some stuff you can overlay on this and, and get straight into that master's program pretty quick. Because uh, you'll have to get a master's in every state in order to be licensed as a counselor. Ashley's in Jacksonville, Florida. Hey, Ashley, what's up? Hi, guys. Um, thank you so much for taking my call. Um, I just have a quick question trying to figure out if we bought too much house in 2020. Um, my husband and I did baby, got to baby step six in 2018 and 2019, paying off our debt um, and paying off about 30% of our house. And then decided we wanted to find a better home, home for family, somewhere that we could be as intentional as we were, but actually enjoy where we were living. Um, but we got back into debt doing it, which is terrible. Please don't yell at me. <laughs> um, we got about $35,000 into debt, um, and we just paid that off last month. So we are happily in baby step three. Um, but now that we're moving towards baby step four and the percentages of like how much my house payment is obviously going to go, it's going to be more of my income since I'm going to be putting 15% into investment. And I'm just trying to figure out if we bought too much house. <laughs> well, the investment does not affect your housing formula. 15% okay. going into investments doesn't affect that. What's your gross pay or your, your net pay, not counting what goes into 401k, not counting what goes into health insurance, but just net of taxes. Net of taxes, um, what's your household take-home pay? Um, and that's, sorry, that's after taxes. I'm not great with the lingo. After taxes, what's your... Yeah, after taxes, I, I don't know the annual income, but it's about 8000 a month. Okay, and how much is your house payment? Um, twenty one sixty two. That's like a fourth. I mean, what's the problem? It's almost a fourth. I wasn't sure if you know, because we're about to get to baby step four, and I was worried once the fifteen percent um, started coming out. Obviously, that dramatically changes how much we could be putting towards the house. And our biggest goal is kind of getting that thing paid off. So, well, you're um, you're going to put fifteen percent at baby step four of your income towards retirement, but that does not affect the calculation of your house payment being twenty five percent of your take home pay. Because your take-home pay is not what comes out. Take-home pay means after taxes. And so, you know, okay. you're, so you're making 100000 So you're probably making $130,000 a year gross. Does that sound about right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. And so you're, um, you're fine on this. There's nothing wrong here. You're going to put 15% away, and then you're going to have to begin to chip away at the mortgage beyond that as you work through baby steps five and six, kids' college, and anything extra you can find, you put on the house. But your house payment is not going to keep you from putting 15% down or 15% into retirement. It's, it's just not. You're not house poor, not even close. So I, I think what you did was you uh, – took a step up and it's a bigger payment than you're emotionally used to and it just smacked you around a little bit which is not a bad thing uh that you that you recognized it because the, the people that are scary are the ones that don't realize that there was a an emotional shift here and uh ouch you can get that sneak up on you and get you so good stuff hey thank you for the call open phones here ken coleman ramsey personality is my co-host today again author of the brand new book on pre-sale from paycheck to purpose the clear path to doing work you love you can pick up a copy at ramseysolutions.com and uh it'll be shipped to you with all kinds of goodies as soon as it actually comes out but it's on pre-sale right now which means there's a bargain around it only 20 bucks and you get about 150 dollars worth of goodies with it be sure and check it out ramseysolutions.com
In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt free stage, Joy and her mom, Ruth, are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Very good. Thank you. And you? Better than I deserve. It's an honor to have you. Where do you guys live? Chihuahua, Mexico. It's about three hours from El Paso, Texas. Oh, yeah. Wow. wow. So an international debt free screen right here. Very cool. So uh, how much did you pay off? About $119,000. Hundred and nineteen thousand. How long did this take? About four years. Four years. Okay. And uh, what was the range of your income during this time? Was it personal debt or what? It's a business. We're self-employed. It was about uh, two hundred and fifty thousand average. Okay. All right. So, what kind of business was this? It's a tree nursery. My mom and brother and I. We have a tree nursery. We grow and sell trees. Oh, okay. Fun. What kind of trees? Anything, fruit trees, evergreen trees, bushes, whatever you want. (laughs) Good. All right. So tell me the story. What happened here? 119,000 of business debt paid off in four years. Yes. Uh, When I was a teenager, it started about before that. When I was a teenager, my dad uh, at the time was listening to different people, and he told us kids, uh, I have three brothers, to listen to Dave Ramsey. And uh, you were talking about spending well, living on nothing and spending less money. And I thought, well, we already live on nothing. We <laughs> had no vacations and no nothing of that sort, not really. And, um, and then, uh, so we forgot about you. And then end of 2016, um, I started doing the business uh, papers, the expenses and all of that. And I realized how very messy and unorganized it was, just terrible. And so I started Googling anything I could find on business advice. And this one day, your name <laughs> popped into my head. I believe it was the Holy Spirit that gave it to me. And so I started listening to you, searching for you. And I loved it. I got very excited, wanted to get organized. And then about two weeks after that, um, my dad got diagnosed with bone cancer. Oh, my. And he did not have insurance. So all the money went to that directly right away. Mm. We couldn't pay off anything. Mm. Then in 2017, we started paying off a little bit. Um, but the majority we paid off uh, 2019 to 2021. Mm. And uh, I take it since he's not here, he didn't, didn't survive the bone mm. cancer? No, no. He, he died uh, two years ago. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You guys have been through a lot. Yes. yes. So uh, so the, the kiddos step in and help run the business then, if that's what it amounts to. Yes, they did. And I was very thankful for that. Amen. Yes. Amen. And obviously very capable. Yes. Yes. And then some. <laughs> capable yes. plus, yeah. Very good. Well, good job. So um, a horrible way to end up in charge, but you're in charge at this point. And uh, Joy, and you start hammering the debt, I guess is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, very mad at the debt, <laughs> very mad. And so, but your advice, it was very practical for us. Uh, I was expecting for looking for business advice, something high where I would not be able to reach. And it was so common sense. So thank you for that. I, I really learned a lot. We all did. My brothers as well. They got very excited about it. Now, I don't get a lot of calls from Mexico, so did I? Did you call in? Yes, I did. I'd, How long ago? I'd say about one, or, one to two years. I, okay, this is coming back to me. Wow. You were working, you were starting to work the plan. I, Ch- Chihuahua and Tree Nursery, yeah, that's starting to ring a bell a little bit. Yes, exactly. I mean, if it, if it was somewhere else, I might, it might not have remembered it because it all kind of runs together, but that does ring a bell. So you called in a couple of years ago. Yes, was yeah. I nice to you? You were very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what your question was regarding? Yes, I wanted to ask about the business exactly because uh, it did not bring much profit or hardly any. And then, so I was wondering how in the world are we going to pay the stat off if we do not have any profit? And was it either to sell the business or to, yeah, I was clueless what to do with it. And uh, you mentioned if the profit was going to be a bit more, if we could get the profit a little bit higher to pay off the debt, we should do that, otherwise sell it. And so we tried that and it worked. We, okay. we did pay off. So you got to keep going. What did you do to, to juice that profit? Actually, just getting organized. We had so much money going out everywhere that we didn't even know about. And uh, me and my brother, uh, one of the, the one that's with me now working on it, uh, and she as well, we just all very intensely tracked all the expenses and income, income, and that gave us a little wiggle room. We had been very disunorganized. Mm. Yes, and with my husband being sick, um, the nursery was left behind. So when he died, we started organizing it again. 
Mm-hmm. It was very overwhelming mm-hmm. to, was. to start. How long did it take to, to kind of get the chaos out? Six months or a year? Or? A year or maybe even two. Yeah. Yeah. And, and But it's a lot peace, more peaceful to run it. Yes. Now without the chaos, mm-hmm. with systems and organization, right? Yes. Yes, and we had a lot of trouble in the meantime uh, trying to pay off debt. Like the trucks were old, they were breaking down and and flat tires and, and the irrigation system was, wasn't working. We had to fix that again and again. And Yeah. A lot of hard work. Mm-hmm. But you made it. Yes. And here you are with no debt. How's it feel? Very <laughs> amazing. And you come all the way to Tennessee yes. to do your debt-free screen. Yes. Well, we are honored. We're honored. You guys, you ladies are, your your family, your heroes for fighting your way through this. That's pretty incredible. Great entrepreneurial story. It really is. I mean, it's fascinating to see how they turned it around. Just organization, getting control of the outflow, the expenses. That's the story. Pretty amazing stuff. And is this this has got big time potential, I'm guessing now, that you've got this thing running well? I really hope so. <laughs> That's what I'm aiming for. Good for you. Well, she has a profit now. That's yeah. a, profit is a that's good a start. thing. Yeah, that's a it's start. a good thing. Yeah. It uh, enables you to fix flat tires on trucks easier. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my goodness. We also cash flowed my youngest brother's wedding, also in the middle of it all. Wow. <laughs> wow. So how many brothers and sisters? How many siblings? Three brothers. Three brothers and you. Yeah. All right. All right. Are you the oldest? I'm in the middle. You're in the middle. Okay. The well, t- actually, there's one boy... Um, He's the oldest. He manages all the, the nursery. Mm-hmm. She manages the the expenses and all the money. Mm-hmm. And her she has a twin brother, which we have here. Mm-hmm. And then the youngest brother, he works for his uncle right now. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. That's wonderful. Yes. What a great family business. So what do you tell people the key? Joy, you did it. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Perseverance and determination. That's it. I could not have done it without. I Yeah. A lot of stubbornness in a good way, because it was hard. It was very hard, but... <laughs> Plus trusting God. Amen. Learning on a, on a higher level to trust God. Mm. And yes. we, we also wanted to give, like we, during that time, all of it, when my dad was sick, there were so many people, they were generous, and they came and visited, and just so willing to give, and um, that looked so beautiful to me. Uh, so uh, we hope to be that way, too. We want to give and be kind to other people. I wish my Spanish was as good as your English. Where'd you learn your English, both of you? High school, from little on. Just a, just part of the part of the curriculum. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Very cool. Wonderful. Very fun. So proud of you, ladies and gentlemen. Very well done. Very well done. Well, we've got a copy of the Legacy Journey for you. That's the uh, for sure what you've been involved in here is legacy type work, and uh, that's the next chapter in this story for it to continue. Very cool. Um, Best debt free scream in a while. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Love this. Very neat. Very neat. And uh, also a copy of the Total Money Makeover for you to give away to someone. Thank you. And uh, if you prefer it in uh, Spanish, both of them are available in Spanish, just to hand out to friends or whatever. That's uh, happy to help you either way, whatever whatever's good for you. So excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. It's Joy and her mom, Ruth, from Chihuahua, Mexico. They paid off the nursery. They paid off the, 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 uh, the tree business and made it. Man, absolutely amazing. $119,000 paid off in four years. $250,000 a year top line on the business. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. We're debt-free. <laughs> <laughs> worth a trip to Nashville. <laughs> That's fun. I love it. So beautiful. So well done. This is The Ramsey Show.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. This is The Ramsey Show. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Amy's in Dallas. Hi, Amy. How are you? I'm good, Mr. Ramsey. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up in your world? Well, okay, so I've been very blessed with financial wellness, mainly because ever since I was about five, I was always asking my dad questions. And so he taught me um, a lot of your principles, really. Um, so when I first graduated college, I, I figured out what I needed to live on and saved all the rest, pretty much. Um, so what that trickled down to is I'm now married, I have two kids, and I had been investing in my company stock for a long time, thinking this is going to be my kids' college fund until I actually have them because I can't put a five to nine on a blank person. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But now that I have a a good chunk of money in there because I didn't take it out because it was just skyrocketing, so I figured I'd ride the wave. But now I have a, my daughter's five and my son is two. I'm thinking, you know, maybe I should withdraw some of this and pull the trigger and pay off the house, which is our only debt and front load both of their five to nines so that I don't have to think about it ever again. Uh, you have enough stock to do rate. both of those things. It's about 450,000. So yes. And how much is, do you own your home? 70,000. <laughs> yeah. You need to do this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I figured you'd probably say that, but I was just a little worried about the tax implications of a big lump sum of money getting, being given to me. Well, what <laughs> do you think the, uh, what do you think? think your gain on it is what do you have invested in this four hundred thousand yeah honestly i think the gains are like three hundred thousand and I, keep in mind i don't have to sell all of it because obviously if i front load a five two nine i could put like 90k in one and 30k in the other and based on calculations i think that'll be okay when they turn 18 mm-hmm. um and then 70k on the house and so i should still have like 200k left over in there but on the gains of the, that 200k especially if i strategically sell like not the ones that were purchased within the last year uh yeah, I think my gains on it is probably hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, you, it, you yeah you I've, select I've the. It it's not that years. big a deal. You, it's a fifteen percent capital gains rate. You've owned it more than a year, and so it's fifteen grand per hundred grand. It's not that mm-hmm. big a deal. Okay. So yeah, you need to do, you need to do this yesterday, and then you know, and when you're selling it, you select the shares that you last mm-hmm. purchased. Last okay. in, first out is the accounting principle on this, meaning that the oh. most expensive shares. The ones you have the most invested in will create the least gain, and that should be the last ones you purchased. So the you know Mm -hmm. as you know as you're and then as you're dealing with it, you want to go with last in, first out. Okay. Then what do I do after that? Because now it's like. Well, then you have two hundred thousand dollars sitting in stock still. Do you want that? I don't. I don't invest in single stocks, and I don't advise people to more than ten percent of their net worth. So, is your net worth over two hundred thousand? I I mean, I'm I'm sorry, over two million. Over two million. Uh, one point three, I think. So, so I think you're a little heavy in a single stock, even after we execute the debt free on the house and the kids. Uh, at five two nines are set up. I'd probably go a different. I'd probably liquidate some of that and move towards mutual funds. I, I'm, I'm not as big a player as you are. I wanna. I don't want that much risk. Claire is in Denver, Colorado. Hey, Claire, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Okay, so I have a little bit of like a double life going on. Um, I am an accountant, and I'm also a professional MMA fighter. And I'm having some You're an accountant. Problems. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want to drive past that too quick. <laughs> You're an accountant by day and an MMA fighter by night. Yeah. It's like yeah, a superhero. Basically. Yeah, like a superhero. Clark Kent. It's yeah. normally good it's normally a good balance. But uh yeah, yeah. So so what happened this week is um so I had a little bit of a of head trauma. Nothing super serious, but it was unexpected and I was having some side effects. So I had to go see a specialist. Um, So I I went to see a neurologist, and basically, um, all of a sudden, I had a $2,500 bill. uh, And that's for my whole treatment. Like, it was actually a very reasonable price and whatnot. Um, But I only had $1,000 in my emergency fund. So I used that, and then I had to 
unfreeze the credit card that I was paying off and put the balance on that card, which, you know, is not something I was wanting to do. Um, and I'm still paying off debt. I've got about $22,000 left in my debt. Uh, so, yeah, so at this point, um, I'm just trying to figure out if maybe I need to pad my emergency fund a little more for the time being uh, before I can get to that third baby step or how I should handle this. Wow. Okay, so um, head trauma is not an unexpected event when you are an MMA fighter. Right. That's a predictable event. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, logically. Yeah. yeah. I, I've never yeah. participated, but I've watched what you do, <laughs> and I'm scared of you right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, have you made money fighting? So I'm at the point right now, um, I'm actually in a really good spot. I fight for a good organization, but uh, the way MMA works is, you're making very little money until you're making a lot of money. So right now, um, from fighting, I make about fifteen grand a year. Okay, let's bank. Let's bank years, that as I mean, a business. Okay. Let's bank that right, to the right. side as a business, and hope you break even with medical bills. Right. So take take run your life on your accounting income, and set mm-hmm. the MMA as, aside as a as a small business idea, and say this small business is going to break even if we're lucky. Okay. Okay. And then that you can just bank that money, and they and instead of changing the baby steps, let's just qualify this as a small business because it legitimately is. It's a side hustle, okay. and right. uh, you know. And, and so, how long have you been doing this? I'm interested. Uh, I have been doing this for I think about six years altogether. I had a long amateur career, and now I'm a professional, so it's, it's been a journey. <laughs> so, how long have you been pro? Uh, I've been pro. Uh, for about, I think it's only been about two years right now so far. How old are you? I'm 25. Okay. So you, you figure you got what, five years in the ring more? You know, I'm hoping 10 more years. So that's also why I'm taking this brain stuff real seriously. And, you know, after that, I want to do accounting for the rest of my life. So, (laughs) yeah. So so you really can't afford to get your eggs scrambled doing that then, right? Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I just wonder, I've got to ask, this is quick. Do you allow the frustration of the accounting to get you mad enough to punch somebody or do you love the accounting? You know, I really love the accounting. <laughs> I, knew like, that. I, I honestly, I feel like I'm living the dream. I love Good both for my you. Jobs. That's <laughs> great. That is so fun. Yeah. And so you're <laughs> so you're you're probably a very technical fighter then. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Very cool. Well, fun, Claire. Well, that's neat. First, first MMA fighter question we've had. So yeah. you're you're the first. Oh, wonderful. You... I know I'll have more moving forward, especially when the money starts rolling in. So. And I'll, I'll probably <laughs> remember the call because it's it, it's it's not one I get all the time. So <laughs> you call back anytime we can help. That's interesting. Very fun. Aren't you a little scared right now, Ken? Oh, yeah. There's no question. In fact, in fact, I just wonder how long I could last in the ring with her. I think three it's too seconds. Late. Too late. You already, you could yeah, it's not, over. Not until you finish the sentence. Right. Yeah, you'd be done. As long as me you too. would take for her to catch up to me, me is too. the real answer. That's right. How, like, how long, how long before I... she could tackle you that's the as real you ran answer. away? Because <laughs> yes, once she it. got her hands on me, it's over. <laughs> I'd probably faint, tap out from his head hitting the ground. <laughs> she wouldn't even have to strike me, I don't think, <laughs> is the real answer. <laughs> Uh, uh, they don't allow guns in there, so I'm not going in there. <laughs> so I'm, true. I'm too scared. Right. I'm just really scared. That's fun. That is awesome. Oh man, I'm a tough lady. Yeah, that, that's that's an interesting way of looking at something, though. I mean, she's looking at this business through the eyes of an accountant. What no an interesting question. thing! No what an question. interesting thing. That's very cool. Well, that puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Ken Coleman, uh, my co-host, James Childs, my producer. Kelly Daniel, my associate producer and phone screener. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, and we'll be back. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? 
Subscribe or follow today wherever you listen to podcasts. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today as we talk about your life, your money, and with Ken here, particularly your career. His new book is on pre-sale right now, soon to be a bestseller. From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love. It's on sale for $20 at RamseySolutions.com, along with about $150 worth of goodies and all kinds of good things happening there. So open phones here at 888-825-5225. Ken, the exciting thing about the sale of your new book has been not only the sales are amazingly high on the book, we knew it would be popular. It's a, an area of life that people need help in from paycheck to purpose. But the assessment that our team and you put together, um, the details and the uh, algorithms and the stuff behind the scenes, you didn't do. The team did, but it was done with your input to get the uh, to, to get people to recognize their talents, passions, and missions. It's a thirty dollar assessment. It's called the Get Clear Assessment. As a matter of fact, for thirty dollars, you can get the assessment and the book and all the goodies if you want to do it that yeah. way as a bundle at Ramsey Solutions, or you can just get the assessment for thirty bucks if you want, which would not be the right way to do it really but you could you ought to get the book and stuff free in a sense if you absolutely went the other way but anyway so uh this is a tool for people that are trying to figure out what their career should be what mm -hmm. direction they should be ha they need to get clear right that's right or it could be confirming a path that you're already on and you're experiencing some doubt so what we do is is this is the tool in the first stage of the seven stages the clear path that we're talking about here in the book from paycheck to purpose the baby steps is a clear path and then we have a clear path and stage one is get clear. So what you're doing is you're going to look at uh, your talent. This is what you do best. Think of your talent as tools. So you got your hard skills and then people skills. Then you got passion. And, and that is the work that you actually love to do. You love the work. You show up because the work itself is something you, you get great joy out of. And then, of course, all work creates results. And that's what we call mission. So what's the missional result that you want to put into the world through your work? And so the assessment, Dave, is going to give you a detailed report on your top talents, your top passions, and that that really that top mission result that you want to put out. And then we take those results and we put them in a purpose statement. And it becomes a guide for you. It becomes a North Star that no matter what decisions you're confronted with, uh, with opportunities to move up in your career, you can always come back and say, is this something that is in my purpose statement, my professional purpose? We call that that sweet spot where people look at you and they marvel and they say, you were born to do this. And so that's what the, the assessment does for people, Dave, is tremendous clarity, which, as you know, breeds confidence in people to step out and do that work. And here's what else clarity provides. It also provides courage in those moments where fear and doubt or failure, pride, stick their ugly head up and kind of say, you can't do this. You shouldn't do this. And that's what clarity does for you. So it is a wonderful tool that will keep you clear throughout your career. The Get Clear Assessment at RamseySolutions.com. Ken, um, what occurs to me here is, is that, uh, the first thing you have to do when it comes to a job is you have to make some money mm -hmm. to feed your family. Provision. Absolutely. And, and you know, pay the bills, keep the lights on, keep the wolf away from the door. So go make some money. Yes. But pretty quickly after you're making money, you know, regardless of how much money it is, yep. you can be making a lot of money. If you're in the wrong thing that you weren't designed to do, 
uh, it starts to become dissatisfying even though all the bills are paid. That's exactly right. It starts to twist up inside yes. your stomach. Yep. And it's the old Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You reach the point that you can self-actualize, yes. which means that we're going to go do something that is a higher calling than simply earning money to eat or pay off debt. There is nothing dishonorable about earning money no. just to pile up debt and, and or to pay off debt and to pile up some money. Uh, but as through the, particularly on the short term, yes, that's not a bad thing at all. Go make some money, mm-hmm. you know, for provision purposes. But it doesn't, uh, but sooner or later, hopefully sooner, you're going to look up and go, I don't need to spend my whole life just chasing the almighty dollar. That's exactly right. And this is because we as human beings long to make a contribution. So the title From Paycheck to Purpose really addresses those two primary needs around work. We need to provide and we need to contribute. We just do. Nobody ever has to teach a human being to to ask the question, what should I do with my life? You know, I got three kids. Dave, you have three kids. You got all kinds of grandbabies now. I can't even keep up. Nobody has to teach a kid to say no. (laughs) <laughs> they just don't. They have to teach a kid to steal a toy from another kid. It, it's just who we are. And, and the same is true of this longing that we have as human beings to make a difference. And the idea here is, is that you can make the income that you need and desire and the impact that you desire. Income and impact through your work is purpose. And that's what we're about here at Ramsey Solutions. You know, you, you walk through our, our building and we'll hope you come visit us sometime and you'll see on the giant screen just, you know, off through the glass there, work that matters. We're all about doing work that matters. And we see a contribution through everything we do at Ramsey Solutions as it relates to providing people a clear path to hope. And, and, and that's missional. And every human being wants to show up and do work that matters to them. It's, it's just life's too short, Dave, to chase a paycheck and just try to make it through till Friday at happy well, hour. And, and what's really interesting, and, you know, intellectually it's easy to grasp this, but I think emotionally I'll, you only grasp it maybe when you get the other side of it is if you will find something that you're talented at, that you're missional about, and that you're passionate about um, – you actually, if you'll just pay attention to the process, mm-hmm. you'll end up making a lot more money doing that. A lot more. Than you would doing the thing that's supposed to be money-based. That's right. But you're not good at or you hate. That's exactly right. Here's why. Because you suck at things you hate. <laughs> that's exactly right. And listen, you won't press through. Yeah, you won't fight it. You won't fight through the... Like, yeah. you know, if we look at your story, Dave... Some, somebody comes at this place... I got a thousand people going after their throat. Oh, yeah. Because they're all ready to fight. I mean, it's a crusade here. Well, this place. Don't mess with this place because this place is blessing people and helping people and loving people. And and so somebody comes at, at the place all thousand team members are like, blah. That's exactly right. But uh, people know your story. It, this place was built on your passion and mission. Yes, you had the talent. You've always been a good communicator and a teacher. It's one of your top talents. But the reality is, is that you care deeply about guiding people and instructing people and the mission was hope and peace and so now when you see all this it's worth fighting through your side hustle which becomes your own company one day or it's worth fighting through the ladder of getting promoted and staying with it long enough you'll suffer because of passion and mission suffer through patience suffer through perseverance check out the get clear assessment You can buy it as a bundle with the From Paycheck to Purpose book, The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love, all at RamseySolutions.com. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org backslash budget. We absolutely believe in it. Ken Coleman, Ramsey. 
Jersey personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Dwayne is with us in Boise, Idaho. Hi, Dwayne. How are you? I'm doing better than I deserve. How are you two doing today? Just the same, sir. How can we help? <laughs> Dave, i um, been able to listen to your show on and off for the last couple of months, and I've been trying to work these baby steps, and I got rid of all my consumer debt, so I've paid all that off, and the last debt I had was a truck that I sold back to my, I got rid of my pickup last week to the dealer, so I have no debt. Wow. So I'm debt-free, but what I do have is I have two rental properties in a, a neighboring town to Boise here, mm-hmm. and one of them I owe 54 on, and the other one I owe 120 on, and they're both at 475 or 489 interest rate because I've had them for many years. Mm-hmm. But they are they have been rented by the same tenants for a long time. Mm-hmm. The one that I owe 54,000 on is is rented by an an 80 something gentleman. And I promised him that he could live there out the rest of his life there at that house. And I, what I want to do is I want to find out is it's smart for me to take an equity loan out on that house and pay off the other property complete. There's enough money there to do that. Um, well, would the equity line, old, would the equity line be a cheaper interest rate? Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. It would be down to three uh three point six seven, the guy told um my mortgage broker told me. So mm. what's that property worth of fifty four thousand owed on it? Um about two twenty five. And you'd two, need to two twenty five to two forty. And you'd be in it at two seventy, right? Or one seventy. Yeah. I'd one, be one seventy five. One seventy, but it's, yeah. Yeah. But it would pay off the other property, which I want to keep. That's I want to keep the one that the one that I owe 120 on. It's a, a lot nicer property. That's where my wife and I plan to live once we retire. The other property, when this gentleman either moves out or passes away, I want to sell that property. So there's the dilemma. Um, my financial situation, the way we're at, it's just my wife and I. We don't have any kids. I got about 25 grand in the bank, and we rent currently. So. Why? But I want to. I want. I want that property debt free. Okay. Why do you rent? Uh, we just moved back into Boise for the last twenty years. I've been traveling around the country for work, mm-hmm. and we we just that's how I wound up with two rental properties. So um, we're looking right now. I can use my VA to uh, buy a property here locally. So my wife and I would like to buy a house. Mm-hmm. here locally because the two rental properties that we have, they cash flow themselves. They don't cost us anything. In fact, I make money on them. Yeah. What's, your so, house, what's your household income? Uh, 150000 Um My wife is a stay-at-home housewife and Bible instructor. She hasn't worked in almost 20 years. Okay. So the income is all mine. That okay. comes from me. Cool. Good to so, see you guys. Well done. All right. Well, so the goal, you're just, like sure you said, you just got plugged steps, into us. Though, so the, the, the long-term goal where we're aiming towards with whatever move you choose to do is that you own your home paid for and you own your rental properties paid for. That needs to be the long-term mm-hmm. goal. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, no, I would not use a VA loan. I would use a, a Fannie Mae and scratch together some down payment because it's cheaper uh, the VA loan is a more expensive loan, interest rate and fees. Uh, it, you can Yes, you okay. can do nothing down, but I'm not going to recommend nothing down because the goal is we're okay. going to try and get your house paid off. So let's work that through then. If we, uh, With that in mind, if you buy a house on a 15-year fixed where the payment's no more than a fourth of your take-home pay, and you say, all right, I'm going to start scratching towards that house, and then when the gentleman moves away from the other property, uh, you sell that property and you use that money to pay off your rental and pay off your home, right? Correct, yes. That's going to be the game plan. That's where we're headed. Um, what does it change to pay, go ahead and pay off that other rental now with a home equity loan? It only changes the formula about 1% of 120000 so about $1,200 a year. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing it moves. To move the mortgage over there doesn't really do anything except about 1000 bucks a year. So, uh, which is what okay. you'll save in interest by moving it over there if you don't get into a bad mortgage deal of some kind. 
And um, uh, so I, I probably wouldn't screw with it. I'd probably just sit on it. It's not that big a savings. Uh, if you want to move it over there, you can um, because it is going to be cheaper. But it's not. it doesn't move the needle here. There's no uh, big thing that happens that's good as a result of doing this. The big thing that happens that's good is when you sell one of these properties and clear your house and clear the other one. The uh, something wrong in here. Check it again. There. Try one more time. Yeah. Nothing. Try plugging it in. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ken's mic's uh, got unplugged in here. It's got an air gap. <laughs> so anyway, that's what you're going to want to do, Sheldon. Or uh, it, uh, I'm sorry, Dwayne. That's the direction you're going to want to go, and um, that the, that's the process. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I think the game plan is is that the guy that's 80 years old, it's going to be a fairly, you know, probably in the next five years or so, you're going to execute the uh, getting rid of that and, and making that happen. So good question, man. Thank you for joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You want to check it? Yeah. Nope. All right. Uh, let's go to Sheldon in Los Angeles. Hi, Sheldon. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. How can I help? Um, so basically I'm in a dilemma right now. Um, so I have, I have a 2014 Volkswagen Jetta. Um, it is finance. Uh, it is on a five year finance. Uh, APR is 19%. Good I'm paying Lord. 333. Yes. I'm paying 330, basically 334 a month, um, on it. So, uh, my engine basically is, is, is done. I need a new engine. Um, I spoke to the mechanic so they are saying the estimate was going to be, uh, it could be in the range of like $5,000. So on that note, I am working part-time. Uh, and literally, I know that's something that I can I do not have at this moment in time. So my question is, should I sell the vehicle, even though it is finance, should I sell the vehicle? And uh, again, been staying up on, you know, what you were saying as far as, you know, putting cash on a vehicle. And also, I was wondering, should I do that? Or, you know, what the other solution would be? What are you making? What's your income? Um, Right now, I am at, I'll say mo- roughly a month is uh, is at 800 a month. Why are you not working full time? Um, At this moment in time, that's what I'm actually just working towards, working full time. Why are you not I, working? Uh, Why are you not working full time? Uh, I was working full time. I ended up basically uh, getting something that could be better potential as far as uh, benefits and all that for myself. It was a full time job that I did have. It didn't have benefits. Yeah, but your job sucks. Eight hundred bucks. That's the poverty level. Yes. You're starving to death, man. You know, yes. if the yes, other job the you had was bad, this one's worse. You need a different job. And you're not even working full time. Yeah. Why? I um, I'm in a process, so I, I did interviews and all that, and uh, could possibly have something full time um, within a week. Oh, uh, good. It's just something that could be better. Yeah. Something oh, that good. Actually, so it's basically it's in the company that I'm at. Um, I work for the city, so I work for city, working my way up. So it could possibly be a full time job that is with benefit. It needs to be so. a full time job by Friday, dude. I mean, you're yeah. starving to death. Um, so you probably need to sell the car as is with the bad engine and you're probably going to have to borrow some money to cover the difference because you're in the hole but get, getting rid of a 19% car loan and get you a thousand dollar hoopty to drive around while you get yourself some good employment but uh, man you're going to get a job you're starving that's really and, and it, there's lots of jobs out there Ken and I will talk about that a little bit when we come back here This is The Ramsey Show.
auto insurance companies love to play the game where they see just how high they can jack up your rates. Seems like for no reason, doesn't it? It's a fun game for them. It's not hard to beat them at their own game, though. All you got to do is check on your policy every year and make sure you're getting the best price for your coverage. That's it. How can you do that? Well, the easiest way is let someone else shop it for you. Go to one of our endorsed local providers, one of our ELPs. They're independent insurance agents, which means they actually work for you because they're shopping a bunch of different companies to get the best price, and then you'll take the deal that's the best price that they help you find. You don't have to do anything but call them. Uh, a lot of people going to our ELPs end up saving on their auto and homeowners as much as seven, $800 a year. And it doesn't cost anything to shop it. So just ask. Text AUTO to 33789 and put a Ramsey Trusted ELP agent on your team. Text AUTO to 33789. Uh, Ken and I were talking going into the break. Actually, I was talking. We were fixing Ken's microphone. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. But um, I was talking to Ken anyway, even though he couldn't talk back. And uh, the jobs numbers are out. So I was a, I'm was aware of those numbers because we had been talking about them an hour or two ago, actually, off air. And then the guy calls in, and he's working part-time, and he doesn't have the money to fix an engine in his car, and he's got a 19% interest rate, and he needs to get rid of the car. And all I can talk about is get a job, get a job, get a job. And that's not because I'm a heartless jerk. It, it's because, dude, you can fall off a log, you can get a job right now. The jobs <laughs> numbers are... I mean, right. you can be dumber than a log and get a job right now because the jobs numbers are – I'm. I, it's bizarre what's happening out there in it's the record, economy. Record numbers. So the June Labor Department report came out Monday, and we've got 10 million-plus jobs open, available right now in the United States. And you compare that to 8.7 million people that are still unemployed, many choosing to be unemployed. They're, they're still getting the federal unemployment benefits that are set to expire on Labor Day, ironically enough. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So, yeah. wait a minute. The unemployment <laughs> ends on Labor Day. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's time to start planning to labor. Yeah. Yeah. Sometime before then. Yeah. And the so opportunities are endless, Dave. Unbelievable. 10 million plus jobs. Here's some good news in this job report because you hear a lot of doom and gloom. So the Ramsey Show is going to give you the truth. This is straight from the Labor Department. Uh, if you look at the jobs, 227,000 professional and business services jobs opened up in the month of June. Now, that's your white collar, think corporate jobs. This is really encouraging. 133,000 jobs in retail. That speaks to consumer confidence. That's a good sign. And then accommodation and food services, that's 121,000 jobs added, opened right now. Uh, it's really unbelievable. And, and, and here's the thing you and I were talking about during the break. you got companies like Walmart, McDonald's, and Target that have all announced in the last 10 days that they're offering tuition. They will pay for your college tuition. And these, these, are, these are jobs that, Dave, are starting at $15 an hour. It's not a, this young man could go get employed right now and not just make financial progress, but make some career progress. So $15 an hour, working 40 hours a week only. Yes. Just 40, which is really not working that hard, um, is $31,000 a year and free tuition. Yeah, can really jumpstart your life. It's better than eight hundred dollars a month, sitting thousand dollars a year, which right. is what he was making. So that was my point: is there's eight point seven million people unemployed. There's ten million jobs. It sounds like we don't have any unemployment. It just sounds like we have people not working. That's exactly what it is. There's a difference. And what a great time to go get hired right now! My goodness, employers will throw jobs at you. To your point earlier, it, yeah. I mean, we're in the process of hiring. Now, we're in a different league yes, because of the type of elite person we're looking for yeah. at Ramsey Solutions. But we're adding 300 positions this year, and uh, we've got a, a tons of um, bazillions of applications. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, I mean, if, if you can go work at Walmart, make 15 bucks an hour, work 40 hours, and go to school full time, which you can do, by the way. Yes. Simultaneously. Uh, go through and get your degree. Don't tell me you have to take out a student loan, and don't tell me you're starving to death. That's just ridiculous. That's exactly right. And here's the deal. Those dominoes are still beginning to fall. You're going to see a lot of other big companies that are going to offer tuition. It's going to become a thing, uh, sadly, that people expect. But companies are in a position right now where they've got to attract people. 
I mean, th- this is literally when we've got 10 million jobs. Well, what's sad is you have to employed. attract them not from other companies. you got to just attract them off their couch. That's the problem. Because they're sitting there making. Listen, let me just talk to you if you're sitting on your couch living off of unemployment right now. I'll just help you with this, okay? It's not shaming. This is just factual life from Papa Dave, okay? There is no dignity mm-hmm. in your life when you are not accomplishing something with your life. Even if you are making a few dollars more sitting on your couch than you could be working, you are not moving your life, your career, your wealth building, the dignity of your relationships ahead by sitting there, even if you make more. Exactly. It, well, I'm not going back to work. I make less work. Well, I mean, not how much less, really, but maybe you ought to work more. So, listen, there, there is a a tremendous correlation between the things that happen uh, chemically inside your body, your mental health, your spiritual well-being, the quality of your relationships, not to mention the actual mathematics of going to work. That's exactly right. You could find yourself theoretically getting ahead, and I wouldn't say by much, but getting ahead financially, but uh, falling behind emotionally, falling behind spiritually, falling behind professionally. Look, depression is a real thing when you're not doing something that that you feel like I'm accomplishing something that really starts to set in and you've got to be very careful. And I I think this is where we get into where we've got government policy that is disincentivizing people to get out and to contribute. Well, to become what they were designed to be. Yes, that's not designed to be a couch potato. No, you were created to contribute to work. There's no question about that, and and I think you're absolutely right. It's and a you scourge. Know, you, I mean, I was. I mean, even if you're doing something like even just cutting the grass, I'm not. I'm not saying for money necessarily. I'm saying when you do something that, and you can look at the the fruit of your yes. labor, yes, and you feel a sense of accomplishment. There's all kinds of things that happen. Not yeah. only in society, but inside of you oh, that yeah. are positive that do not happen when you're sitting on your butt. One of my favorite things to do around the house is pressure washing. I get tremendous joy out of seeing the before and after, and it feels really good to sit back, even though you know it may be hot when you're doing it. You sit back and look, this is better now because I actually applied you know, some Aye. basic diligence here to hold a wand and shoot water pressure at something you're right there is a sense of accomplishment accomplishment and there's things that that changes the way you walk yeah it changes your posture it changes the way you relate to other people it changes your ability and your quality of your generosity yeah it cha- i mean th- there's a there's a whole soup of things here it's not as simple as oh i'm beating the system i don't have to work and the government's going to take care of me I, and listen, if you if you're down on your luck, I, I get it. I'm not mad at you. I, I'm not here to pick on you. That's not the thing. The, the the point is though that that choosing and we've got these numbers that are telling us that there's a large number of Americans. They may sure. not be listeners to this show. Sure, and probably not attracted to this show. Probably, but but there's a large number of people based on those numbers that could be working and just are choosing not to. That's exactly right. And when you're working, you're making progress, whether it's paying off debt or or funding your way through getting qualified to do the work you want to do. You're going to have to work at some point. You're going to have to. And sitting at home right now, and here's the other thing. This is not going to stay this way. This is not going to stay this way forever. This is a great time to move, to actually get hired. And I think of a young person, you think of somebody right now going, all right, I went to college uh, uh, or I never got the chance to go to college, couldn't afford it. Instead of community college, why don't you go work for a big time company who's going to pay your way to get a degree? They're going to fund your future. I don't know why you wouldn't do that. Who cares if you don't love stocking shelves? I'm stocking shelves for my future. Yeah. Yeah. It's perspective. Uh, it's just it's a great place to go when you're broke, to work. This is The Ramsey Show.
Ken Coleman Ramsey personality is my co-host today as we talk to you about your life, your money, your career. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Open phones. And up next is Nick in Hartford, Connecticut. Hi, Nick. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you for taking the call. Sure. What's up? So I'm starting a new job next week for making 40000 but I have 100000 in debt. Almost all of it student loans. About 5000 is on credit cards. Um, I just started watching your uh, videos on YouTube and realizing, wow, I've made, you know, really dumb mistakes. <laughs> um, and so I know I need to go through the baby steps and take all that. What I was going to do was restructure my debt to more favorable, favorable terms. But I wanted to see what your opinion was on that to make sure I'm not making another, you know, big mistake. Restructure your student loans. Yeah. So my student loans, about sixty-seven thousand of them, are private with a high interest rate. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've gotten a quote on how I can get, you know, refinance that into one at a much lower rate. Do it. Okay. Yeah, lower rate's not bad, as unless there's a prepayment penalty. Make sure there's no prepayment penalty, and then get about the business of cleaning these things up. Uh, once you get settled into this new job, I want you to pick up a second job and uh, make another 40 k and throw it all at this debt. I want you to be debt-free in two years. Okay. I mean, I really get after it, it, man. I mean, Nick, I want you to go cray-cray, man. I want you to go nuts, <laughs> or your friends think you need counseling, because all you do is work and pay debt. Okay. I mean, it, oh, it, wouldn't it be cool to be done with this in two years? Definitely. Yeah. That's forty forty five thousand dollars a year gets you there. And so that means you gotta make forty, you gotta live on less than the forty that you're making now, and you need to go make another forty on top of this as your extra part time job and you'll be done in two years. But all you're gonna do all you're gonna do for two years is work. But you're gonna clean up this whole mess in two years and you won't even be what, twenty five years old, will you? I'm 26 now. Okay. Well, then you'd be 28 years old, and you're completely free. Or you can be 38 years old and still screwing around with this stuff like most people. Okay. That's really your two options. you got to get with it or not. And what Ken and I were just talking about, there's lots of opportunities out there. I mean, again, you can pick up 40 hours of extra job at Walmart at $15 an hour. That's $30,000 a year. Which means I know you can do better than that, even. So that's just exactly what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. And 80 hours a week. I don't want to be a workaholic. You're not going to be a workaholic. You're working for two years with a goal. Mm-hmm. A workaholic is someone who is mentally imbalanced yep. and gets all of their, uh, the, you know, gets all this, um, they're addicted to work mentally. Mm-hmm. That's not what we're suggesting. Working hard is not workaholism. Working a lot is not workaholism. It's called getting out of a dadgum mess. Yep. And you just get back, you get with it. I mean, he could do a lot of stuff. Oh, tons of stuff. I mean, again, the, 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 look, the minimum wage is at a place right now that if if you don't uh, you find mean, something, it's because you're not looking. That's the reality. If you want to find something to get out of debt, it's there. Big time. You show up with a smile and, and some character, you're going to get $15 an hour or more, and you can get out of debt quick. I'm telling you, it, the demand is so hot right now, it's unbelievable. Yeah. If you don't, then you're going to just wake up 10 years from now. And and here's the thing. Two years from today, the market won't be like this. It will not. The the job market comes and goes like all parts of the economy. It has swings to it. Mary's with us. Mary is in Austin, Texas. Hi, Mary. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, My husband is retiring from the military, and he's going to start another job with a government agency. We have a TSP, and I was wondering if you have any advice on whether we should roll out our TSP into a separate retirement account and start a new one at the new job, or do we continue to contribute to our current TSP? Uh, I would roll it to an individual IRA. Uh, There's no taxes in doing that. And because you can find mutual funds in the open market that outperform the TSP options. Okay. The C plan's not bad. We tell folks to put 80% in the C, 10% in the S, and 10% in the I. 
is how we tell you to allocate your TSP. But you can get mutual funds that will outperform that mix if you go to a good investment advisor like one of our SmartVestor pros. So just go to RamseySolutions.com, click SmartVestor, and find one of the pros in your area. Sit down, talk to them, understand what you're doing. And what I would do is roll it over to an individual IRA, a traditional IRA, and put it in four types of mutual funds, growth, growth and income, aggressive growth, and international and then when he starts the new position he can start the tsp fresh and just uh, again 80 percent c 10 percent s and 10 percent i is how i would allocate that and that's going to give you the best rate of return okay okay thank you so much thanks for calling in open phones here at 888-825-5225 sawyer is with us in hickory north carolina hey sawyer what's up Hey, Dave. How are you doing? I appreciate you taking my call. Sure. How can I help? Uh, well, I've got a question for you. Uh, I've recently, it's me trying to make a decision on something. Uh, so I have a possible expense uh, that I would be committed to for a year. Uh, it would be roughly $400 uh, a month. So my current home expenses are a little less than half of my current take-home pay. Uh, that's including, you know, rent. Uh, the only thing I owe for is a is a truck, and uh, the truck payments are a little over four hundred a month. But uh, I, I did that specifically because I'm trying to get this thing paid off. Because I've been a, I've listened to you for a long time. I don't like being in debt. And if I am, I don't want to be long. How much do you owe uh, on the truck? Uh, the truck is about fourteen thousand left. And your household income is what? Uh, roughly a month. It is. Uh, Right at twenty seven hundred dollars a month. Pretty expensive truck. Yeah, it. Uh, I was not. It. Well, the reason I ended up looking for a truck was thanks to a girl that rear-ended my old one. <laughs> but uh, I was originally looking for an older truck, and uh, I was really after listening to you for so long. But uh, it ended up being that I got this truck, and uh, so I've got a little over three years left to go. Uh, on it because I got it for four years mm-hmm. and uh, specifically wanted to, if I was going to get something like that, I knew I'd have higher payments, but I wanted to get it paid off as quickly as I could. But mm-hmm. the expense that I've got coming up, though, that I'm trying to decide on is, uh, <laughs> I told the lady on here that you might find it slightly amusing, is uh, it, there is a hair type product online like that's supposed to try to help you regrow hair, <laughs> and uh, it would be almost another $400 a month. So I tried to do my numbers on my current expenses, and so my expenses per month are roughly a little over uh, $1,200 a month. Uh, that's including that truck, and that's also including me putting back for a retirement fund that I have. So that's all of my expenses except for, say, gas how, and how food. Old you, how old are you, Sawyer? Uh, 27. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, well, you, you make... Thirty-eight thousand dollars a year, forty thousand dollars a year. You have a fourteen thousand dollar truck, and you're putting money into investments. And you just went and bought the truck on payments. Um, and one hundred percent of the things you've described are things that we tell you not to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? I mean, do you? Yeah. How long have you listened to the show? Uh, well, for a for a long time, but it has. It's actually been several years since I've got to listen again. Okay. Uh, All right. Let's, 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 to okay. be fair to you, then, let's recap. All right. What okay. we would tell you to do is to become debt-free first after you have $1,000 saved. Do you have any money in savings? Uh, yes, sir, about $5,500. Good. Okay. Uh, you now have $1,000, and you put 4500 on your $14,000 truck, and that leaves you ten or $9,500 left on the truck. Uh, you also have an extra job now, and you're going to pay that truck off in a very, very short period of time. When you do that, you're going to finish your emergency. Oh, by the way, you stopped all, all your long-term investing temporarily today, too, because you're going to work the baby steps. And then once you're debt-free and you have your emergency fund in place, then if you want to do the hair regrowth program and you want to pay for that, that's when you would do it at that point. I'm not sure I would do it. Obviously, I haven't done it. So I was going to ask if, if, if it did, it was, no, it was a no-go. I was going to ask for you if it I works. did not try it, but if I had tried it, <laughs> it's obvious Giles, it didn't work. So. The Ramsey Show. You can listen to all our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. 
browse by topic, or even sync clips to your friends. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Five. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. So college has gotten crazy. Mm. It's crazy expensive. We've all known that. We've got this epic student loan debacle, pandemic, financial pandemic, that is eating, eating away at the very fabric of our culture. And as of 2019, if your kid went to a four-year school, tuition ran somewhere between 20 and 40,000 bucks, somewhere around there. Um, And depending on the, you know, that that's the average. That would include you can go for about ten, twelve thousand dollars a year to an in-state school tuition. Certainly, private is going to be a lot more than that, and all kinds of ranges on the private side. But if you're going to save for college, we have always taught to use the 529, one particular type. And the particular type of 529, there's several types. The, the only one you want is the type that allows you to select the mutual funds and allows you to move the mutual funds if you don't like them. You don't want to get into a fixed plan. Uh, you don't want to get into a plan that automatically does your investment mix. Danger. You don't want to get into a plan that's prepaid tuition. You want to get into a plan where you pick the mutual funds and you have the right and the ability to move them. You always have that right and ability with the ESA, the Educational Savings Account. Both the 529 and the ESA will grow completely tax-free. And that tax-free growth makes a big difference if you, when you start with a baby and you're saving for 18 years because you could have 100, 150,000 in there and really over half of it be growth and no taxes. That matters. Oh, big time. So we want to get the tax free bonus, the tax free growth. And so we always have taught you to go in baby step five. The first $2,000 a year you can do as an ESA. It's real easy to set up, and it grows tax-free. It's basically a Roth IRA for college. The 529, if you want to do more than $2,000 a year, is available if you select that particular type of 529. And uh, you got to be careful. you got to watch what you're doing, and you need some help in this to walk you through it. and the trick is to get with one of our uh, SmartVestor pros and let them lead you through the process. I mean, we've got the book by Anthony O'Neill, Debt-Free Degree. There's a lot of ways that in today's job market, uh, we were talking in another hour, Walmart, Target, uh, McDonald's, some of these $15 an hour jobs now. And in this current environment, they're paying um, – you know, they're paying for tuition. Yes. But if you're not in that kind of a thing and you don't want to depend on that kind of thing always being there, so you want to save for your kid's college in baby step five so that it, so you don't become, so your kid doesn't become a statistic of, of student loan debt. So text invest to 33789 and we'll hook you up with a Ramsey vetted, Ramsey trusted Smart Vester Pro. Now, what the Smart Investor Pros are is these are investment brokers that we have vetted. They have, A, the heart of a teacher. They're going to teach you the 529, teach you the ESA, teach you the mutual funds to put in it, and show you how you can get the tax-free growth going in your favor. And um, 
two really good solid savings options there and how the mutual funds work so that you know what you're getting into in the whole process here. So if you're ready to get your Baby Step 5 going, you're ready to start saving for your kid's college, uh, new baby on the scene, that kind of thing, you're ready to go, text INVEST to 33789. And between doing that and using some common sense, you should not have student loan debt under any circumstances. That's correct. And how about this? Let's just throw something else in there. Parents, we've got to ask the question, uh, if our kiddo has an idea what they want to do, now they've got to get clear on this, is it the only way? Is it the best way? It's a two-part question. Is traditional college education the only way? Is it the best way? Uh, it's still a great experience. You know, the liberal arts are a wonderful experience for people to learn. But we've got to make sure that, that we're choosing or helping our kids choose the right path to go do what they want to do. And, you know, between community college, maybe a two-year associates, maybe all they need, and then some specific certification and training to go a path to. So we've got to look at the big picture and not just assume that higher ed is the only way my kiddo uh, or that we, if we're transitioning from one career to the next, is the only way we get there. Sometimes it is. There's absolutely no way around it. Here's what's interesting. When you spend money that you have saved mm -hmm. diligently over a number of years, you are much more careful That's exactly right. with the purchase sure. than you are if you just go, yeah, I'm get just going to sign on the dotted line and borrow the money and walk out of here and impulse my butt into something. <laughs> and that's, what yeah. that's how people pick the wrong college, yep. the wrong university mm -hmm. that's too expensive, that they can't afford. Uh, that's how they pick bad degrees because mm -hmm. they just go, oh, I just signed up. I just went. I there was very little thought that went into it. But when you have saved for 18 freaking years yes. in your ESA for your kid and your kid comes in and wants to do something stupid, you yes. say no. Yeah, you slam the brakes. No, you're not doing something stupid. Yeah. You're and not going to study some nuanced, ridiculous degree yeah. in left-handed puppetry yeah. and spend the money that I've right. saved for 18 freaking years to do that. Yeah. Here's another one. I cited the Wall Street Journal article uh, on Columbia, uh, various, you know, you know, big time name brand in New York. And they followed a story of a guy, Dave, who got his film degree, a graduate level degree in film from Columbia. And he's $333,000 in debt. He's working in LA making $60,000 a year. Well, I got news for you. You don't need a Columbia grad degree in film studies to get a $60,000 job in Los Angeles. You just don't. You could use my proximity principle book, which will sell you for a great discount at RamseySolutions.com. Less, less than 333000 we will. Less than $333,000. And this, this guy's- Considerably. Guy, considerably. But this guy's talking about, he's like, I'm in debt for life. Yeah. And you could hear it. Even though it was a written article, you could hear the pain coming off this poor young guy. And here's what's happening. I bring this point up to say that the name brand school, there's no statistical data that I'm aware of. There's no piece of research I've ever that I'm seen aware of in 30 years. That says that the, the, the sexier the name of the school, the bigger the paycheck. Nobody cares. In, the borrowed, in the borrowed Future podcast, uh, Seth Godin calls them famous schools. Famous, he's right. Famous schools. They're it famous schools. That's all yeah. they are. You went to yeah. a famous school. Yeah. You know what that gets you? Bragging Nothing. rights at the cocktail party. Nothing else. Nothing. Does it get you more respect or more pay? I, you know, I, yeah, for fun, I got a sweatshirt <laughs> when we were in, in Boston. It says Harvard on it. Yeah. I remember. Do you cut the grass in it? You don't even cut the grass. What am I talking about? I don't even have a sweatshirt. It's oh, gone. you just bought it? I bought it, but it didn't last. I mean, did you burn it? Just it just wasn't funny. Did you burn it in effigy? Me wearing a Harvard shirt was just not, <laughs> it was not believable. Oh, no, no chance. No one, no one would, everybody would look and go, no, nah, it didn't happen. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices, and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. Coleman Ramsey personality is my 
my co-host today, author of the number one best-selling book, The Proximity Principle, and a brand new book that is on pre-sale right now called From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love. Boise, Idaho, Andrew's on the line. Hey, Andrew, how can we help? I'm doing well. Thanks for taking my call today. Sure. What's up? Um, So my question is, is it worth leaving a job that I don't hate but also is not fulfilling uh, if I have to take a pay cut to do so. Well, I I just have a question on that. Is that the only option you have to leave this unfulfilling job is a job that pays less? Well, it would be, um, it would take me two or three years to get back up to where I am now in a new field. Why? Um, Because I do not have the, um, the technical skills in that field. I'd be switching from uh, sales to accounting. Do you want to do accounting long term or take accounting and take it higher? Um, I want to do accounting uh, long term as a CPA um, working with small businesses. Okay, great. And so what's the qualification process look like? How much financially is that going to cost you? Um, So depending on the year, but um, 30 to 60 percent pay cut. So I get it t- this year. It would be about a fifty percent pay cut. What right. do you make? Um, so I make my base salary is about uh, sixty five thousand a year. Yeah, um, and then I bonus. Uh, um, this year I'll probably bonus a little over a hundred thousand. So you make one hundred sixty five thousand dollars a year. Uh, no, sorry. Um, total, With the bonus, yeah, hundred thousand total. With the bonus pay. Base okay, so you make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Yes. Okay. And you're how old? Uh, 30. Okay. Okay, so the question I have, though, is there's some training, not just experience. How much is the training going to cost you, the certification to become a CPA? What's that actual cost? Um, so I have some school towards it already. Right. Um, so I have about two and a half years of school left. Um, the programs I've been looking at, it would cost me probably about, 15000 to 20000 to finish up. Okay. So the reason that I don't think you need to take a pay cut is we, we can stay in an unfulfilling job if it allows us to make the kind of money we need to cash flow and not go into debt or pay off any other debt that you have to be able to move into the accounting field. But if you take a significant pay cut, it takes everything much longer. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. So with the pay cut, I would be, um, I would be able to still do it within the three years. Um, well, why not do it in one year and not take a pay cut? Fair enough. That's. I think you've created mostly, a false narrative. Okay. You don't so have to the, take a pay cut. Correct. Um, the struggle I have now is I work about fifty to sixty hours a week. And so finding time for school, um, I have young kids at home, finding the time for school um, is difficult, if that makes sense. It makes sense, but it's a separate conversation. You know, the first it's like, hey, so I take a pay cut. I don't think you need to take a pay cut. You shouldn't take a pay cut. Uh, but okay. the, but but you still have got to figure out what have, what do I have to do to get where I want to go? And I get that you got small kids, but they're small kids. They're young kids. They don't know how much time you're spending with them. It's, this comes down to how much you really want to get where you want to go and what sacrifices you're going to have to make. Uh, you know, in this particular situation, you're going to have to sacrifice financially uh, in that you're saving up money to pay for the qualifications you need. You're going to have to sacrifice some time with the kids. Uh, that's okay. just your reality, but that's, that's a not, short this season. Is not, this is not for five yeah. years. This yeah. is for 12 months. Yeah. Right. The and kids so will be the, fine. The opportunity um, with this particular accounting firm is now. I guess that's kind of the... So what? That's not the only accounting firm that will hire you and give you the opportunity to climb a ladder. So it's not an opportunity. It's yeah. a curse. Yeah, it takes you backwards. Fair enough. Are they going to, you know, the the opportunity would be great if they offered you 80 grand and paid for your tuition and you work 40 hours a week Mm -hmm. so that you could go ahead and uh, instead of 60 hours a week at your sales job, take a small pay cut. But when you're talking about taking a 40 or a 50 or 65% pay cut, that's just as silly, man. This doesn't work. 
That's okay. so far backward that that you're 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 short circuiting the whole process by doing that. But if they, you know, if these yeah. guys really want you, then hey, they're going to pay you. You know, they're Fair asking. Enough. Listen, so, listen. Let me just tell. I'm I'm an employer. Okay, we hire we hire 300 okay. people this year. The number of people that I hire at sixty five thousand dollars a year that took a pay cut from a hundred and sixty five thousand this year will be precisely zero. I wouldn't hire you. Fair but, enough. Because it's silly. Even if you're going, well, working for Ramsey, I've always wanted to work for Dave Ramsey. He's the best guy on the planet. I think he's the most wonderful. Bull crap. You're taking a 165 to 65 cut or from 100000 down to $65,000 cut. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm a great guy. I'm not that great. Don't do it. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, let, final word on this. You've got to change your mindset about this current day job that's unfulfilling. It doesn't matter. You do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do. And you got to change your mindset, change your entire attitude. I'm grateful for this job because it is setting me up for a future. That has to change. And then lay in place a game plan yeah. that you strategically get after yep. making this accounting process happen for you. Go get your CPA. Go get it. Yeah. Go get it. Pay the price. Pay the price to win. And, you know, uh, but I think you go back to this accounting firm and you say, look, guys, I'm not moving from 100000 to 50000 It doesn't make sense. Yeah. I, what kind of an accountant would I be if I thought that was a good idea? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's absolutely right. So, uh, you, you should be able to do math to do accounting. And so, yeah, I mean, so I can't do that. And so if you guys can give me a much less hit down to about 80 and you'll pick up my tuition and help me get the CPA, then this then it's worth taking a little step back to move forward. But yeah, this is just too deep a cut. I wouldn't do it. No, nope. you do what you want to do. You called us and asked. We're both telling you no. Dave, here's something here. There's some psychology around opportunities, and this is a great situation here to, to unpack this. Just because it is an opportunity doesn't mean it is a good opportunity. We just walked through this. This is a bad opportunity. It, it, yes, it's an opportunity to do accounting work and to get there, but it revolves around too many other harmful decisions, slow decisions, poor decisions, however you want to classify it. And so it, there's this psychology of us humans. We want something really bad. We're not in fulfilling work, and we see an opportunity. And we make it shinier than it is. You've got to look at the entire picture around it, you know, because it's not the only accounting firm. It's not the only entrance. Uh, it's not the only ladder, whatever metaphor you want to use. And if it's a bad move, it's a bad move, even though it's an opportunity. It's not the only one. You know, this involves purchasing things. Mm -hmm. uh, it involves uh, any kind of situation where you're having to make a decision. One rule, and I teach this in Entree Leadership when I'm teaching leadership lessons to business people, one rule of decision-making, if you want to make a high-quality decision, the there's almost no times that you make a high-quality decision when there's only two options. Mm -hmm. You need more options. Yes. Lots and lots and lots of options. And as you look at the different options, you go, well, that's that's a really bad option. And that one has got some good points to it, but it's still a bad option. And that option, and that option. And you lay them all out there. And if you got 10 different ways you can do something, 10 different job offers on the table, 10 different places you can purchase a car, 10 different cars you can purchase, and you're starting to compare across them instead of going, oh, they only have the black one over there. And the black one, and if I don't get the black one, and it's, it's that one thing, and it's a very special, oh, it's a freaking car. And we get all fatalistic about it. And that's right, right about that time is when you get stupid. Yep. So you need more options so that you find a good one. And that's the process. This is The Ramsey Show.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. This is The Ramsey Show in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Tim is with us. Hey, Tim, how are you? I'm, I'm well, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Honored to have you, sir. Where do you live? Uh, out in Rockford, Minnesota. Okay. Small. Minneapolis area. Yeah, a small town a little west. Yeah, cool. Welcome. Welcome to Nashville. Thank how you. much have you paid off? 77479 Excellent. And how long did this take you? 13 crazy months. <laughs> <laughs> and your range of income during that 13 crazy months? Uh, I went from 49000 up to 75000 Wow. What do you do for a living? I'm an elementary school physical education teacher. Mm-hmm. And then for the 13 months, I was delivering pizzas for Domino's, and I worked a golf course for a while. Wow. Anything it took, huh? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Scratch and claw and get it done. Yes, I love sir. it. What kind of debt was the 77000 uh, I had a little over 8000 in a car loan, and then the remainder was student loans. Student loans, student loans, student loans. Here yes. we go. I love it. Very cool. So what happened to you 13 months ago that made you go crazy like this? <laughs> so uh, before I can kind of share the, uh, the debt payoff story, I want to tell a story that kind of informs how I had the energy and the motivation to do it. Um, coming out of high school, I was close to 400 pounds, uh, very unhealthy, just not really taking care of myself. And um, th- back then is when I kind of first discovered what gazelle intensity was before I even had any idea of your teachings. Mm-hmm. Um, ended up getting into the gym and you know just working hard seven days a week and and uh, I was able to get myself down to to a healthy range and and uh, take care of things there and. Um, That's short- amazing. Oh, yeah. Thank you so 400. much. So you lost over 200 pounds. Yeah. yeah wow. I did. Uh, unfortunately, after that, some life happened, and I, I did go back up a little bit. I was, I was up to 336 pounds again. Um, but then it was three years ago or so. Uh, I got back on it and uh, you know, got back on the right path, and now I'm back down to where I was pre-putting it back. So mm-hmm. um, fast forward to the debt. Uh, I had a conversation with my cousin's husband, Alan. He had uh, read your book and did debt payoff of his own. And uh, he asked me if I had any sort of plan in place for my student loans or if they were just going to hang out forever, which at the time, my plan really wasn't a plan. I was signed up for the public service loan forgiveness. And I just assumed, you know, I I make minimum payments and eventually it would be forgiven. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, Alan pointed out that uh, something like 1% of people who had applied were, were receiving forgiveness, and it wasn't much of a plan at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's where we put together a budget and uh, came up with a plan at the time we said it was going to be 24 months to get rid of it. Um, I already had close to 10000 in the bank, so that was just pay off the car, got your emergency fund figured out, and we were off to the races from there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So he, he lined you up on how to do this then? Yes, sir. All right. Very cool. And then how did you connect up with us? Just through him? Yeah. So he gave me a copy of your book. Mm-hmm. Uh, I read the Total Money Makeover and went through Financial Peace University and it was instantly hooked just as fast as I took to the gym years ago. I, I just dove in and uh, got to work. Okay. So, yeah, you, you had already figured out through your weight loss and everything and your, your career choice and everything else that you can control the guy in your mirror. Yeah. And that wasn't a revelation to you. You just had to apply it to the money piece. Yep. Yeah, I just hadn't done it in the financial side of things before, so it was a somewhat easy transition in that sense. Yeah, I got to ask you because you, you shared uh, a really compelling how you went back a little bit on the weight. Yeah. Did you have that happen on this debt-free journey, or were you just laser-focused and you never stopped? Were you kind of like a wood chipper, just throwing logs in there? Yeah, it was it was wood chipper this time for the for the debt. Uh, there was really nothing stopping it. The only, there was only you know a couple of times along the way where I just felt tired, but sure. uh, never never really wavered or went back. Um, How many hours you just described for us? Pizza, working at a golf course. How many hours did you log? What was the longest week? At the peak of it, I, I think I put in 85, 86 hours. Woo. Uh, um, and I was doing consistently 80. Um, very fortunate to have understanding and patient friends and family and my wonderful fiance who I, I met actually during that time. Um, How? It doesn't seem like you had any time to meet a woman. <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> online dating, it worked out. So. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. Good for you, man. That's Just incredible. Drove by and waved and went on to your next job. <laughs> it was like <laughs> we we had to get creative and finding ways to find time for each other, but uh, yeah. we, we made it. And now we're here. And so now you're free. Awesome. How yes, does it sir. feel to be free? Oh, it's incredible. I, I can't, it's hard to describe, honestly. Will you, will you go back? Will you add this back? Well, well will, will I go, go back, back into debt? debt? No, sir. Never. Okay. All right. Good. Good. I'm glad to hear that. You're a hero, man. Yeah. Proud of you. <laughs> Absolutely. Very well done. Thank you very, very much. Very, very proud of you. I Excellent. appreciate it. Excellent. Excellent job. So what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? 
you know, for me, it was honestly just letting go of the idea that there was a magic pill, silver bullet, or white knight coming to save me. Um, th there isn't. There's nothing but you and good old-fashioned hard work, and you just got to put in the time. Also, finding what's important and making sure that they remain a priority. Uh, you know, during that time, I was working 80 hours a week, but I did see my girlfriend at the time, fiance now, and, and made time to see family and things like that. So, Very cool. Uh, it's all about the balance, right? Very cool. Well done, man. Well done. Very well done. Excellent, excellent job. What was the hardest part? The hours? Yeah, uh, it, it was tough. Well, and um, so as as the relationship with with Bree grew, um, it was just, I started to get her no, get to know her kids more and things like that. And then they are starting to want more time with me. And that's when I knew it was time to quit the dominoes. Um, you know, when we got little girls at home wondering when Tim was going to be around, I was like, okay, we're done with that. But um, so the last couple of months, I it was just my teaching salary that that we did it with. But. Okay, so you kind of. That, that's cool. Very cool. And when you can see the end, it's easy to make some adjustments. Yeah, it but is. But you got to bust into it till you can see the end. Yeah. Yep. Very well. Very well done. Good job, man. Hey, thank you. Well, we got a copy of The Legacy Journey for you, and uh, that's the next chapter in your story for sure, to build and create a whole new legacy with this new marriage coming up and everything. Do you have a date set? Not yet. This is actually very, very recent. Uh, I proposed on my trip here. So. Oh! <laughs> this just happened. We uh, actually went to Ruby Falls and yeah. got Chattanooga. Oh, yeah, so beautiful. Gorgeous. Uh, proposed down in the cave. I didn't have a ring at the time because it wasn't planned. But I'm like, I'm never going to be able to beat this moment down in the cave by a 100-foot waterfall. So I just <laughs> decided to do that. And then we went ring shopping the next day. Oh, All right. that's great. Congratulations. Oh, oh Thank you fun. very much. Congrats. That's excellent. Best great. part of the ring shopping thing was uh, I told the gentleman that I was going to be on your show. And he started to talk about, and he, he caught himself as he was explaining, like, financing options. And I'm like, oh, no, we don't need to do that. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to work out. No. <laughs> that's fun. Very cool, dude. Well, that is fun. And we got a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away to somebody as well. So Absolutely. Legacy Journey, Total Money Makeover. Thank you, man. We appreciate you. Very well done. Very proud of you. And congrats. And thanks for... Uh, Thanks for making us part of your whole story here. That's a beautiful story. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Very cool. All right, Tim from the Minneapolis area, $77,000 paid off in 13 months. How? 80-hour weeks. 49000 to 75000 during that time. And now he's free and can work however he wants to work right. nowadays. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. I'm debt-free! Yeah! <laughs> that is how it's done right there. You know, it's it's almost as if today our theme has been hard work yes. all through all three hours today. So and true. we've seen examples of people who have done it and examples of people who couldn't figure it out. No, don't want to try it. Don't even want to work hard. And this guy, man, he's a machine. And... Turn around and look, sees two, two little girls that yes. are starting to count on him. Yeah. This relationship is growing and says, uh, I'm going to dial it back now because right. I can see the finish line and get on across yeah. the finish line. That's huge. It's really huge. What you see there is the, the commitment to a future, a desired future. And then all of a sudden, uh, the relationship piece comes in. He goes, okay, I'm going to dial it back and I'm still going to finish. I might finish a little bit slower time, if you will, but it matters so much because of this beautiful relationship and those little girls. I mean, this is what it's all about. It's so much bigger than us. You know, money uh, holds us back from really the desired future that we all long for. What an incredible story. What a hero. 85 hours at his top week. That is that's busting it, gazelle. Man. That's <laughs> if there is a gazelle, it. that's it. That's getting it. That's getting it. I love it. This is The Ramsey Show.
Our scripture of the day, Proverbs 9 10, the fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. One half of knowing what you want is knowing what you must give up before you get it, Mitch Album said. Our question today comes from Blinds.com, great American company. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online window retailer, window custom window coverings. This is an incredible company. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best possible deal. Today's question comes from Rihanna in Toronto. She says, I'm 28 years old, and I've been in my retail job for 10 years. I've gone from a temporary associate to supervisor, but now that I've made it there, I'm miserable. To pay down debt, I recently started a second job as a hotel night shift auditor, and I love everything about it. I think it's my calling. My day job pays more than my night job would pay in a full-time position. Should I stay at my day job until I'm debt-free, even though I hate it? (laughs) Well, Dave, a lot of layers to this onion, uh, but yeah, you should stay at your day job until you can replace that day job with something that you enjoy a whole lot more. But to move into this newfound I think it's my calling job uh, that pays a whole lot less. It's not a good move while you're paying off debt. This gets to what we were talking about earlier that, you know, when we find something that we enjoy and we want to do it, the reality is there's always a financial cost, whether it's to get qualified or uh, in taking a pay cut. Uh, It's just not a good move in her situation. You've got to get debt free. When you get debt free, keep walking the baby steps out, and then we can begin the process of moving into. Uh, similar work to that night auditor that pays a lot better. They got to look into what is the work, the part of the night auditor job that I love so much. Let's find similar work like that that has a ladder of opportunity. That's what I would tell her. Yeah, and then let's get up that ladder yeah. uh, because I think auditor would pay more than retail supervisor. Yeah. yeah. It should. Yeah, it, it should. I mean, I don't know what type of auditing you're looking at, but there's a lot of different categories that that could fall in. That's right. And that would probably scratch the itch that you've got, the yeah. thing that you like about the job. Yeah. John is with us in Reno, Nevada. Hi, John. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, uh, Ken and Dave. Thanks so much. I'm pretty nervous. It's okay. Um, I'm going to try to summarize my question real quick. So I work for a company. I'm a manager. I report to all of the corporate leadership equally. And uh, right now I'm kind of struggling in my job because um, uh, there's a lot of factors, but basically I'm finding that my values are at odds with theirs and how I want to do my work. Um, The way that they have me do my work, I'm not proud of it. And it's really, really highly stressing me out. My wife and I are on baby step number two. And we um, I, we make 150 about 150 thousand a year total together. What do you make? And so my question, I make 100 thousand myself. Okay. And what is it that they're asking you to do that yeah. you don't want to do? So it's just the it, there's nothing immoral or unethical. It's it's kind of the way that they want me to do my work. For example, they'll give me a project. I'll be almost 90 percent done with it. Then they they trash it, and it happens over and over again. They're very disorganized. The corporate team is is disunified. They have cliques that disagree with each other and I'm caught in the middle. And I, I'll follow orders from this person. Then the other person will tell me stop. So I have to stop. I've asked them to get unified, but they, it's just their modus operandi. It's, it's the way they've always run this company and I don't see it changing. What do you do? Um, I'm a, I'm a medic, I'm a medical clinic manager. So give me an example of they've asked you to do a project, you do it, and it, or you're 90% done, and then they trash it. I want to know the why they would trash it in that example. Yeah, a uh, good example would be uh, they wanted to start a pharmacy department, so I was laying the groundwork for that compliance-wise, hiring-wise. Uh, we were in our final interview with the pharmacist we were going to hire, and the next day they canceled the project. The reason was finances. And that's understandable to me. It's just a complete lack of planning and, and total disorganization. They don't really have a, they don't really budget carefully, and they don't really follow their plans. Okay, so when they communicated that the finances weren't there, you understood that. But but the issue is, is they just kind of set you off on this path, and they didn't do the planning, and that irritates you, and you're getting to a point where you're getting really frustrated. So you're working exactly. for you're working for a group of medical people, and your job's to run the business. Yeah, my job's to run the the, the clinic here, and it's uh. Separate from where the corporate office is, yeah. Huh. So what was your question? You were about ready to get to the question, and we asked you some questions. What was your big question? Yeah, my big question is, um, 
how quickly should I leave? Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to leave. I just don't know how hard to push it. I would like to leave right away. My heart's kind of left. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, we're in, we're in step number two, and uh, we're making really good money. And if I were to leave, we, I want to get out of um I want to get out of the state we're in, and uh, if I were to leave, it would be a move and a pay cut, at least at this point, because I'm very inexperienced and I don't have a degree. So entry level, I'd basically be an entry level manager at whatever position I take up. Well, this is a math thing. So we don't leave until we've got a something good to leave to. I understand that you're in a really tough situation where your heart's left you, and in a normal situation, if you had no debt and you could just move quickly, uh, then I'd say leave quickly. But I think that you've got to keep this path going to where you're paying off the debt. You guys are making really good money. I would challenge your assumption that you moving into uh, uh, another opportunity where you're running a clinic that you'd have to start all over. I mean, you've got some good How long experience. How have you been there. running this clinic? Yeah. Uh, a year and a half. Then I've why couldn't you go run another clinic? Who says you can't? Who says you have to take a pay cut? That's absolute BS. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess the root, also the root of my question is just how, you know, the company really loves me. They're always telling me they love me. They're, they're putting a lot of, of trust in me. They've depended on me a lot. I don't think that matters. Patients. I think you left. Yeah. You're, yeah. Si- you're sick and tired of their disorganization and the chaos yeah. and the disrespect yeah. of your work. Yeah. It's only going to get worse for you unless they somehow... They're not going to They're not going to fix this. You're gone. So, so where are you getting this idea that you have to take a pay cut? Just uh, jobs we're looking at in other areas we'd want to move. They usually start around sixty thousand, up to eighty or ninety thousand. And um, so I think you need to get an eighty or a ninety thousand dollar job lined up, and so you quit your hundred thousand dollar job, and the ninety thousand has an upside of one hundred and twenty. Yep. And you don't you don't think it's like <laughs> I guess I'm really emotional. You like shot right up in it because the company's been so good to me other than okay this issue. All right. Wait, they so, have not been good to you yeah there's some guilt you're dealing with because you think that they've done all this for you and you leaving them is going to make you a bad guy and that's simply not the case you don't <laughs> owe them a life of mediocrity they're a disaster you're going to end up resenting yeah. these people that you're worried about you disappointing already resent them well yeah yeah so i mean yeah there's no reason for guilt none None. This is not your mama. It's your boss. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, go. You just it's a job. Go, you know, go get a position with somebody that's organized and that has a game plan and has a mission, and you can lead the charge in the mission and go land a job, and then turn in your two week notice and move out of Nevada to the place that you're going to go work. Yeah, I have one other thing on this. My family is telling me I need to stay because. I'm the kind of person that will help them get organized. Your family <laughs> is not in charge of your life. You are in charge of your life. Yeah. I know. I just And you I'm spent the like, last five minutes telling us how crummy a place this is and how stressed out you yeah. are. And then you spent the next three minutes trying to talk us into how wonderful yeah. it is okay. and how you're a superman and you're there to save them. You're the savior. <laughs> this is a bunch of crap, man. You need to quit. Yeah. I get After breaking you get the news, new job. Dave. His family is not telling him to stay because they think he can turn it around. His family's telling him to stay because they don't want him to leave. Breaking news right there. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, they're in Nevada. Yeah. yeah his okay. family is saying, I think you should stay because you're the one guy who can turn these wildcats into properly trained felines. Yeah. No, they don't want these, you to leave. We're going to get these butterflies to fly in formation. Right. Family doesn't want him to leave. Yeah. That's so sorry. Or they're just afraid also. And that's okay. Yeah. So, John, you need to go get another job, make a 90 with an upside of 120 in a state that you want to live in. And you need to take accept the position and then turn in your two week notice, sir. That's the answer to you. you you're not you're not going to be happy five years from now if you stay in this job. It's not going there. That puts us hour of the Ramsey show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus.
have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.